This loaf of bread contains more chemicals than my high school chemistry set. And here's the thing that'll really blow your mind. It's completely legal. Check this out. On the left, your average American sandwich bread. On the right, the same type of bread from a supermarket in France. Notice anything. Different? By the end of this video, you'll never look at sandwich bread the same way again. And honestly, you might get a little angry. Let's dive in. So last week, I'm standing in the bread aisle, you know, the place that smells weirdly amazing, and I flip over this loaf to check the price, but then I actually read the ingredient list. Flour, water, yeast. Okay, that makes sense. But then it just keeps going. Calcium propionate, sodium steroid lactylate, azota carbonamide. I'm sorry, what? Here's the question nobody's really asking. Why does modern bread need 20 plus ingredients when humans have been making perfectly good bread with just four things for literally thousands of years? Flour, water, yeast, salt, that's it. So today we're breaking down the most controversial chemicals hiding in your bread, why food companies use them, and what they're actually doing to your body. And trust me, some of this stuff is going to shock you. Let's start with the big one, potassium bromate. This is a dough conditioner that makes bread rise higher and gives it that perfect fluffy texture we all love. Sounds harmless, right? Wrong. Potassium bromate is literally banned in the European Union, the UK, Canada, China, Brazil, and dozens of other countries. Why? Because it's been classified as a possible carcinogen. That's cancer-causing agent for those playing at home. But here in the US, totally legal. Some brands still use it. The FDA just politely suggests that bakers not use it. Great, love that for us. Next up, azotic carbonamide, or ADA. You might have heard this called the yoga mat chemical. And yeah, that's because it's literally used to make yoga mats and shoe soles. So naturally, we also put it in bread. Makes total sense. Food companies use ADA as a bleaching agent in dough conditioner. It makes the dough easier to work with and whitens the flour. The problem? When ADA is baked, it breaks down into compounds that, let's just say the research isn't exactly comforting. Singapore will literally fine you or throw you in jail for using this stuff in food. Meanwhile, it's in countless bread brands across America. Now let's talk about datum and other emulsifiers with names that sound like Star Wars droids. These are additives that keep your bread soft and give it that eternal shelf life. You ever wonder why store-bought bread can sit on your counter for two weeks and still be squishy? That's not normal. Real bread goes stale in like two days. Recent studies have started linking these emulsifiers to gut inflammation and changes in your microbiome. Basically, they might be messing with the good bacteria in your digestive system. The research is still ongoing, but it's definitely raising some red flags. And here's one you might not expect. High fructose corn syrup. In bread. Why is there added sugar, specifically this type of processed sugar, in bread? Two reasons. One, it feeds the yeast and speeds up production. Two, it makes the bread taste slightly sweet, which hits those pleasure centers in your brain. You know what that means? You crave it more. It's not an accident, it's by design. Okay, so now you're probably thinking, why would companies do this? Why not just make normal bread? It all comes down to three things, speed, shelf life, and profit margins. Traditional bread making takes time. We're talking 24 hours of fermentation, proofing, careful attention. Industrial bread? They've got that down to about two hours from mixing to packaging. These chemicals let companies skip all those slow, natural processes. Potassium bromate makes dough rise faster. Enzymes speed up gluten development. Dough conditioners reduce kneading time. Every minute saved is money in the bank. Real bread goes stale quickly. That's what bread does. But if you're shipping bread across the country and it needs to sit in warehouses and on store shelves for weeks, you need preservatives. Calcium propionate stops mold. Emulsifiers keep it soft. All these additives mean bread can travel thousands of miles and still feel fresh when you buy it. Factories need every single loaf to look, feel, and taste exactly the same. Natural fermentation? That's unpredictable. The dough might behave differently based on humidity, temperature, the moon phase. 
Who knows? But chemicals? Chemicals are consistent. Same result every single time. Perfect for mass production. So here's the bottom line. These chemicals aren't in your bread to make it healthier or better for you. They're there to make it cheaper and more profitable to produce. That's it. Your health is just not really part of the equation. Now here's where this gets really interesting. Let's talk about how the rest of the world handles this. In the European Union, they have something called the precautionary principle. Basically, if there's any reasonable doubt about whether a chemical is safe, it doesn't go in the food supply. Period. End of story. That's why potassium bromide, azotocarbonamide, and several other additives are straight up illegal across Europe. They looked at the research and said, yeah, no thanks. Meanwhile, in the United States, we have what's called the grass system, generally recognized as safe. And here's the wild part. Companies can actually determine on their own whether their chemicals are grass. They don't even have to tell the FDA. They can just decide it's safe and start using it. There are thousands of chemicals in American food that have never been independently tested by the FDA. The companies that profit from using them are the same ones deciding they're safe. Let me put this in perspective. The same loaf of bread, same brand, has different ingredients in Europe than in America because certain chemicals literally aren't allowed there. So these companies can make bread without all this stuff. They just choose not to here because they don't have to. That should make you angry. It definitely makes me angry. All right, enough doom and gloom. Let's talk solutions because you're not helpless here. First, actually read the ingredient list. I know, revolutionary concept. Look for bread where you can recognize and pronounce everything listed. If it reads like a chemistry exam, put it back. Good bread should have flour, water, yeast, salt, maybe some seeds, honey, or olive oil. That's it. If you're seeing more than seven or eight ingredients, that's a red flag. Shop at local bakeries when possible. Real bakeries making bread the traditional way don't need all these chemicals. Yeah, it might cost a dollar or two more, but you're getting actual food. Look for sourdough. The fermentation process in real sourdough is natural and actually makes the bread more digestible. Plus, true sourdough doesn't need commercial yeast or all those conditioners. If you're shopping at regular stores, brands like Dave's Killer Bread, Ezekiel, and Alvarado Street Bakery tend to have much cleaner ingredient lists. Check your local grocery store. More natural options are popping up. And look, I know this sounds intimidating, but making bread at home is actually pretty simple. You don't need fancy equipment. Flour, water, yeast, salt, a bowl, and thyme. There are no need recipes that are literally five minutes of active work. There are loads of beginner-friendly videos on the internet. Try it once. You'll be shocked at how easy it is and how much better it tastes. If you're worried about cost, because yes, better bread is often more expensive, here's my advice. Buy less, waste less. Two good loaves a month that you actually eat beat four chemical loaves that go moldy. Freeze extra slices. Real bread freezes perfectly, and you can toast it straight from frozen. The point is, you have options. You don't have to just accept whatever the food industry decides to put in your body. So let's recap what we've learned today. Your bread probably contains chemicals that are banned in most developed countries. These chemicals are there to make production faster and cheaper, not to benefit your health. And the regulatory system that's supposed to protect you, it's basically running on the honor system. But here's the empowering part. You have more control than you think. Every time you choose to buy cleaner bread, support local bakeries, or make your own, you're voting with your wallet. Companies respond to that. So here's my challenge for you. Right now, go check your bread, count the ingredients, screenshot that list, and let me know in the comments how many ingredients are on there. I'm genuinely curious what everyone finds. And if this video opened your eyes, wait until next week. We're investigating what's actually in your breakfast cereal. Spoiler alert, it's not pretty. If you want to see that video, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. We're doing a whole series on what's hiding in everyday foods, and trust me, you don't want to miss it. Thanks for watching, and remember, you deserve to know what you're eating. And here are eight foods to avoid with an enlarged prostate.